you have terms like linear programming, LP, and mixed integer linear programming, MILP. And so these are, these sound like they're pretty standard mathematical optimization terms. Yeah. Uh, but in data science, I don't, I, I don't know what these terms mean. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, essentially what a linear programming model is, um, is it's, and, and I'll sort of go through this by relating like, um, words or phrases in, in, in English to, and then to, to some math and then to a code to code that then, then uses, um, our solver. So, um, in a, in a linear programming model and, and also in, uh, MILP, which we also, we also shorten it and get rid of the L and we would just say MIP, or, um, if you want to be hip to the lingo, we just say MIP. Um, <laughs> but, um, essentially you need to be able to take a, take a business problem, a decision problem, and then translate it into the math and then that math into code and, and everything like that. So, um, what a linear programming model is, it, it starts with some, some basic building blocks. First is um, what we call decision variables. So these are the actual decisions that, um, that you'd be making if you were to sort of follow this prescription that, that the model will spit out at the end. So it could be things like the, um, do I wanna, uh, it could be the number of products to make of a certain, a certain type or the number of this type of product to ship from one location to another. Um, and it could, and then also um, things that are a little bit more complicated to uh, to talk about, which is, you know, do I want to open this warehouse? Do I want to create this shipping route? Do I want to um, offer this new product line? Sort of, those are um, the, the decisions that I talked about, at, you know, a few seconds ago. Those are called continuous decision variables. So you have, you know, any any number is possible from zero up. You know, they're typically always talk about things in our decision variables as, as non-negative numbers. Um, but like those other decisions that I was talking about, of do I want to open this uh, this facility or this warehouse or do I want to take this route? Those are binary decisions. So on off switches, yes, no's, um, zero, one. Um, and then we also have decision variables that are integer. Um, so if you're, say you're building airplanes, um, you can't really build a third of an airplane. <laughs> so you need to be either, you know, three, you know, four, five, six, seven, you need to have that, that integrality there. So, um, so those are the types of decision variables that, that you use in linear programming is when you have just purely continuous. And then um, in mixed integer programming is when you have a mixture of both. Um, and then IP is when the things are purely integer. Um, so that's one of the building, that's part of the building blocks. The next is taking those decision variables and formulating constraints. So if you're thinking about, you know, the shipping um, problem that I was just talking about, you know, maybe you have a, a, a limited number of trucks that you can use, that's a constraint. Or you have a limited budget that you can spend on, um, on, on travel or other things like that, you know, that implements a constraint. You can't just send, you know, every, you can't send 50 trucks to do something if you only have 10. So this is uh, adding in those constraints, make, you know, uh, make the, the business problem more realistic, make the, the, the modeling more realistic because it actually guarantees that these things are met. Um, and then the last building block is an objective function. So um, you take those decision variables again, and then you add in some parameters like costs or you know, shipping times or, or things of that nature just um, you know th the data of the problem and and uh, formulate this objective so let's say I want to do all my shipping at minimal cost or if you want to then uh, maybe integrate you know the you know um, the revenue that you would expect to sell at certain stores um, for you know given a certain line of products um, which sounds like something you can definitely predict <laughs> um, foreshadowing um, but uh, then <laughs> Then you take those parameters and you multiply it by you know your decisions, and that sort of gives you one function that that says, okay, this is my this is going to be my profit, um, or this is going to be my my revenue or my costs or my times to do stuff. And you, you, then you want to either maximize that or like minimize that. So you want to maximize your profit, minimize your costs, or maximize efficiency, or you know all sorts of things like that. You know, it doesn't always have to be. Um, you know, based with, you know, money, um, but that's just typically how businesses work. 
you could be you could have any type of you know a, a function and and you're trying to like either push that up as high as you can or bring it down as low as you possibly can so um so sort of through all of that <laughs> that uh my spiel there is you're taking a business problem that someone tells you like okay i want to i want to minimize my costs and these are the things that i need to do and and here's my constraints and and, and here's my end goal um you take all of that stuff you uh then write some math about it write it in an algebraic form which isn't always necessary but highly highly encouraged um because it it, it it's it really um helps with the transition to the code and and uh so then you take all that you you code it all up you have like this awesome python script or something like that or you can use you know for for us at groby we have a bunch of different ways that you can interact uh with us and then and then once you get through all that that's actually now is when you get to using Garobi. We are essentially just the library that solves that. Mm -hmm. So once you have this, this problem in a, in a math, mathematical form and then in a code form, then you would call Garobi to do the really, really difficult work of actually finding that, that optimal solution. So, so that's how it sort of, the whole process sort of works. And actually Garobi's at the very end where you, uh, you, know, you, you fire it up to actually solve the problem because you know, the algorithms, algorithms, the special sauce, I guess, to actually spit out the optimal solution. It's really, really hard to, you know, to do that. Um, it's a very difficult, if, if anyone out there is, is um, great with complexity theory um, and, and things like that, you can look up just exactly where um, integer programming falls under that. And it, it's, it, it's super, super hard uh, to solve. 